Hey coders and welcome to episode 5 of our HTML service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about the client UI interaction. So if you remember from previous playlists, if you were on a popular G Suite product such as Sheets or Docs or Forms, you could customize the UI of that product by displaying things such as pop-ups or modals or sidebars things of that nature and not only that but you could also write your own client side code some HTML and JavaScript and CSS to display within that customized UI component however we have not been able to communicate that code that client side code with those UI components as of yet and that is what this video is going to solve so the top five methods that we're going to cover today are google.script.host close editor.focus set height, and set width. So let's jump into the code and see what we can do. Again, you wouldn't want to use the methods found off of google.script.host on a web application only on UI components found on certain G Suite products such as Sheets or Docs or Forms. So let me show you what we have set up so far. We are displaying a modal, right? We're displaying a modal to the UI. It's going to be a modeless dialog and it's using the interface, the user interface off of a custom HTML client side code that we have written right here. So let me show you that in our spreadsheet. We're just going to show the dialog now. And here it is right here. So the functionality of this modal or the functionality of this client side code is we're going to insert some data. Well, let me just type in my name for now. Once we hit this submit button, then it should insert whatever data I have written in this input box into the last row of the first column. So if I hit David and I hit submit, then there we go. We have David now inputted into cell A1. Let's try that again with my last name, Weiss. We'll hit submit and it should appear, yep, right here in cell A2. Alrighty, so let's say now, as you can see, once we hit the submit button, we should get uh, some data right there. But let's say that we wanted to programmatically close down this modal. Again, it doesn't have to be a modal. It could be like a sidebar, but we're just going to showcase the modal for this video. All right. So again, let's say we want to programmatically close this down as soon as we hit the submit button. I understand that there is this X button that we could uh, click, but that is just one extra step. And we want to make this a very seamless experience for our users. All right. So the way to do that is we would go into our client side code and we have a bunch of code written down right here. We have all the CSS right here. We have the body of our HTML document, and then we also have our JavaScript, our client-side JavaScript written right here. So here is what we learned in the last video, the Google dot, whoops, the Google dot script dot run. Uh, and what this is gonna do is it's going to run our server-side function input data, which is right here, and that is what is doing the inputting of the data on our spreadsheet. We're getting the sheet by name, and then we're appending the row with our data that we pass into it. All right, so now let's say that we wanted to close, again, the modal after we have clicked the button. Well, we would just have to type in google.script.host, and then the method is simply close. All right, so now let's hit save. And also, before I go back into the spreadsheet, I want you to notice uh, one more thing, and I want you to notice uh, the speed or, or when the modal actually closes down, right? So if I hit show, if I hit my functions, show dialog, and I type in some stuff, I'll just say sheets. Okay, so when I hit the submit button, watch what happens. All right, so if you saw, and you can replay this if you want, but as you saw, the modal closed down instantaneously, right? The modal closed down, and then after that, the data appeared in cell A3. And, um, if, if you look at this, you might be considering, okay, why did that happen? Okay, so we, we wanted to run this input data first, so we wanted to input the data, and then after that, close it down. So why, why did this close method run first, and then after that, the input data? And that is because this is implicitly an asynchronous function. So again, we, we, it, did, it did execute line by line, and then once it hit line 41, it said, all right, google.script.run.inputdata. So it ran, it said, all right, just run this input data. Um, but that, that's, that, this is the only, uh, the job of this line is just to tell this function to run. It, it doesn't wait for it to, to uh, complete. It just tells this function to run. Uh, so that is what asynchronous means. 
basically we are running this function as we are continuing line by line down the client side JavaScript and it just happened that this uh, that this line ran before this could completely uh, finish running so that is why the close method uh, it closed down the modal before the data was inputted uh, because again uh, this was run asynchronously so again to run it synchronously or to have like a callback we, we learned this in the last video um, but let me just emphasize it again we need the to tack on the method with success handler and let me just uh, say something like display success alright so now we can define our own function called display success function display success and we will now put this close method within this function and that makes a little bit more sense right because you wouldn't want to really close the method down if for some reason there was an error in the inputting of the data right you wouldn't want that to happen you only want to close the modal down after we have successfully input the data so let's try that again we'll just showcase that uh, and see what happens now so if we say something like slides and we hit the submit button watch what happens so again this modal does not close down until this data has been successfully inputted into uh, cell A4 and that is a little bit better for the user experience all right so that's enough for the google.script.run we covered that in the last episode so watch that if you want a little bit more explanation on what that means all right so now for now I'm going to showcase um, another method but before I actually write it in I want you to see what the default behavior is so let's go back to my functions dot show dialog we'll write in forms all right and once I hit the submit button we all know what's gonna happen right we're going to have this inputted right into forms right but uh, right now the focus my my focus is on this modal right so if I try to move around uh, you can't tell right now, but I'm t I'm tapping the uh, directional pad. I'm tapping up, down, left, right, and this this little selector right here is not moving at all. And that is because again, my focus is on this modal. Uh, and even if I hit the delete button, it doesn't do anything. And to switch the focus back, we need to click on this editor right here, right? So now if I move around with the with the directional pad, uh, the selector moves all around, and I can delete stuff. I can I can move around but if I click on the modal and I try to move around it doesn't do anything right so there is a way to actually programmatically switch the focus back to the editor and let me just showcase that right now so again I don't really use this that often but I'm sure there is a use case for it uh, in some alternative universe um, so I'm just going to show that right now just for completeness alright so the method is editor.focus all right, so now if I hit save, and let me just rerun the script, and actually let me put let me put the the selector right on B3, and I am going to say apps script. So as soon as I hit the submit button, I'm going to try to move around, and it's not going to do anything until after the the data has been inputted into cell A6. So let me hit the submit button. And I'm trying to move around, but nothing happens until the data has been uh, inputted into A6. And then now that this the focus has been switched back to the editor, and I can move around as freely as I would like to. All right, so that is editor.focus. Let's showcase two more things before we close out this video, and that is set width and set height. So set width is going to set the width of the UI component in pixels. And then similarly, set height is going to do the same thing for the height, uh, also in pixels. So let's say we want to set the width to 800 and the height, let's say, just to 600. And this is how you would do it. Actually, you wouldn't include this editor. Uh, you would just say google.script.host.setwidth or .setheight. And again, these numbers are in pixels. All right, so now let's save it and let's do this one more time before we wrap up this video. And let's say a Gmail. All right, so if we hit the submit button, then it should input it into A7, and then after that has been completed, 
the size of the modal, as you'll see, should change. So hit submit. There we go. And then as you can see now, our modal has increased in size to 800 pixels in width and 600 pixels in height. So that is, again, pretty dang cool that you can programmatically change that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something in it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the very next episode.